guys, we are back. Good evening, good morning, or good afternoon. As always, it is so great to see you. And friends, welcome to, this is gonna be an interesting topic here today. We're gonna to be talking about ISO. Now, if you're like me, you remember the days back when professional photographers would beg and plead with people to use the lowest ISO possible at all times. Heck, I'm even one of the people that have written plenty of articles over the years about the value of keeping your ISO as low as you can. But times have changed and cameras are much more capable and using the lowest ISO in your camera is no longer as important as it was in the past. Now in today's video, I'm gonna show you just how far you can push your ISO without worrying about having too much noise in your images. And I'm pretty sure you're gonna be surprised at just how far you can take it. But before we get into all that, I want you to say hello to my little friend. Now, when you enjoy a video or find it helpful, the like button down there really wants to know about it. And I want to know about it as well. I love the feedback and it helps me understand what I'm doing well and I suppose what I'm not doing well. So as you're watching today's video, do me a solid and introduce yourself to the like button and let me know what you liked about the video down in the comments below as well. And also, I keep bringing it up. We're trying to grow this channel. And every time you hit that like button, what you're doing also is you're telling YouTube's algorithm that this video was helpful for you. So what YouTube, just like us, they're all about helping people. So now YouTube is gonna show this video to more people, which in then turn helps out those people and of course helps out this channel. So my friend, a big thank you to you. And now my friend, now that we're all on the same page, pull up a seat and let's go. It's not your grandma's ISO anymore. Now, as I spoke a moment ago, the running logic for much of my photography career has always been to minimize ISO at all costs. Now, I viewed ISO as a sort of a last stand for getting the exposure right. The setting that I changed only when every other option had been exhausted. Sure, there were times when ramping up ISO was acceptable, like for astrophotography, but other than that, I kept my ISO at near bottom of the scale for virtually every single shot that I would take. But today's cameras aren't what they were even a few years ago. Matter of fact, today's cameras like my Canon EOS R5 and R6 are far more capable in terms of ISO performance and they have a wider native ISO range and a wider expandable ISO range as well. And guys, the quality of images that you can take at higher ISOs is much greater than some of the older cameras. But old habits die hard. And as a landscape photographer, it has been hard for me to get out of that mindset of minimalizing ISO. And heck, if you're watching this video, you may be in the same boat as me as well, or where I was in the past. So what we're going to do is this. I'm gonna take a few shots. Each of them is going to be a different ISO. You're going to get to see each image and you're going to be able to inspect the quality of the images along with me. And together, we're gonna to see that ISO isn't something to fear. Additionally, we're gonna be able to identify the ISO setting that gives us unacceptable levels of noise. Now, obviously, not all of you have the same cameras that I do. So the noise threshold on your camera is going to be a little bit different, but the point remains the same. By doing this simple test with your camera, you can identify the ISO values that you can comfortably use. So let's get to it. All right, so here we are. And this is a, just a set of flowers that honestly should have been thrown out already, but I needed something to photograph here for you guys. So uh, these are some flowers on our dining room or excuse me, our coffee table downstairs. Um, and right on the top here, you can see my camera settings, of course. And right off here, this could be our baseline, uh, ISO 1000 or 100 rather. And the first jump we're gonna take is ISO 500. Now I've gone through these already, so I have an idea of where things start getting a little noticeable with the, the noise. Uh, we're gonna go through here first, and then we're gonna go through again, except zoomed in. So as you can see, ISO 500, things look pretty darn good. I'm gonna hit the right arrows, and now we're up to ISO 1000. And again, when you look at these, the colors look pretty spot on the highlights down here in the reflection look pretty good uh these little ends right here i'm paying attention to they look pretty sharp let's move up to so we're at iso 2000 now and 
on the highlights here, I can notice just a little bit of a difference, just a tad bit right here, but nothing really too bad. Uh, my sharpness up on the edges here looks, again, zoomed out as far as we are right now. For me, this looks pretty darn good for considering ISO 2000. 2500 and again just a slight loss of highlights I noticed right here in the reflection on the on the vase itself other than that when I start comparing them side by side I don't see much of a difference at this point. I don't see, I'm also paying attention to a lot of this area up here. And like at this point, I can see just a faint bit of noise that's popping up. And I think if we go up to, so for me, 3200, I'm noticing a little bit more. At this point, I'm noticing a little bit of noise, but very, very faint. Again, zoomed all the way out. And you can see, there's ISO 4000 and again overall it looks good though you gotta admit it looks good there is 5000 we're still looking pretty solid here 6400 there's ISO 8000 and I only took photos up to ISO 10,000 but again when you look at the image as it is right now, zoomed all the way out. And again, I noticed just a tad bit of a reduction in the uh, the highlights here in the, the vase, the reflection of the vase here. I don't see a terrible big difference between these here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so let's zoom in 100%. All right, so here's the main leaf. Now, off the get-go, okay, we're at ISO 500 right here. I see this section right here. I'm looking at the sharpness and the details in the leaf. Things look pretty solid to me right here. Okay, so jumping up to ISO 1000, there is a slight reduction right in this section right here. And if you compare it to here of the, the details and the sharpness, and you can see some of the highlights. We've lost some of the highlights or some of the detail right in this area right here. Let's kind of snoop around a little bit here. And again, if you notice this edge right here, compare it to right here. And again, we have to keep in mind, we are zoomed in 100%, so we are really in tight right now. Uh, but if you look at the background, there's not much noise happening, again, at 1000. And keep in mind, folks, this is the EOS R5. We're going to move up to 2000. Okay, oops, it decided to move me on its own. Let's go back to where we were. Okay, so let's look at the background. So the background, when you compare the two, yes, I can see some noise coming in. Let's go back to this one part right here. So now it's a little bit more noticeable. If you look at the details between right in here, this edge, you know, those fine little fuzzies right there, while we can still see them, we've lost some of those highlights and some of the sharp details. But again, uh, considering that we are zoomed in so far, uh, and for ISO 2000, this isn't shabby at all. And let's take a look at those little, uh, there's a little hair going or something going between those little ends right there. And I'm gonna go down to this one particular leaf. Here we go. This is where I kept going back to when I initially went through this. So, and again, you can see in the original, all the sharp, all the detail here. And while we've lost a bit of that here, it still doesn't look too bad. For me, I would be happy with going up to ISO 2000, and that's where I'm setting the stage or the bar for myself. I am I find this acceptable. 2500. And you can notice the noise pop in it, and again, zoomed in as far as we are right here, I notice a little bit more of the noise with this in the solids here. And we'll just for show and tell just go up a little bit higher. So now in 3200, you can really start seeing 
some of these big negative spaces here, noise coming in. And going back over to our main pedal here that we keep using, uh, it's not bad. Um, so going back to this here, you we're not going to be looking at these images zoomed in this far, inches away from the, uh, the, the print there or zoomed down. I mean, if you're printing going on a billboard or something like that, yeah, that might come into play. So for me, I find everything, at least on this particular camera, everything below ISO 2000 completely acceptable. Granted, there's a little bit of loss of highlights and a little bit of reduction in sharpness, but considering how far that we're zoomed in, I find this acceptable. Boom! And with our simple test complete, I think you can agree that there's way more possibilities for pushing ISO than we might have really expected. Now we can go well above the minimal ISO that our cameras offer and use the higher values without worrying about introducing too much noise. And remember that we were zoomed in way in on these sample images and inspecting them at pixel level. So let's be real here, this is not how you're going to be looking at your images that you have hanging on your walls, is it? I don't, I mean, I mean do you? <laughs> so you can honestly push your ISO levels even further than what we did here today and still get images on the wall that are going to look great. And for landscape photographers like me, ISO opens up greater possibilities for both aperture and shutter speed where I want them to be for the look and feel of the image that I want. So ISO is going to do the same for you. That said, stop being afraid of higher ISOs. There really isn't anything to fear here. And some things up my friend, this is all about understanding your camera, where the performance lines are in it. So when you get out and you have you have a better understanding of where noise is introduced and so forth, you're going to be able to quickly get onto scene, frame up and have one less thing in your head that you have to worry about to get the perfect shot that you want. Thanks for joining me on this little ISO test. Now let's quickly discuss our current giveaway. Here are the prizes that we have this time around. A Desk Lab Ultralight Portable Touchscreen Monitor, a Hida M15 Bracket and Filters. $100 Adorama gift card. As always, entering the giveaway is really simple. Step one, like this video and subscribe to our channel. Step two, leave a comment below. In fact, the more of our videos that you watch and leave a comment on, the more chances that you have to win. So get watching some of our other videos and leave some comments. Step three, register on Photography Talk and introduce yourself in the form. Now, if you registered on the site uh, during one of the last giveaways and introduce yourself, you're still eligible to win, but Man, as I keep saying over and over again, swing on by, let us know what's happening. We would love to see it. Friend, that is it. For complete details on the giveaway, including how to register on Photography Talk and how to say hello in the form, check out the description below. Good luck. Well, there you go, friends. This is one of those topics that you know, we see a lot of folks asking about ISO levels, how far to push it, this and that. So this is another one of those videos that I've been wanting to check off for a little while. I hope this video was helpful for you. It was a blast to put together. Now, as always, I'm gonna ask you to do all that YouTube stuff. If this video was helpful, go down below, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Go down there, hit the subscribe button. And hey, while you're at it, hit that bell to be notified. Each time that we come out with a video, you're gonna be notified about that. Now, I'm gonna be jumping out of here. My friend, you get out there, stay healthy, and create your best shot.